I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my website, globalmapinstitute.com and the YouTube channel. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos, posting excellent questions and remarks. Here is one of the questions, which is very challenging, posted by one of the students. I'd like you to go through this question, try it out. I'm going to discuss today a very different approach, uh, specifically in sketching and then solving a question. So here is a question based on trigonometry. We are going to use cosine law as a 3D application. The question here is, Anil starts his morning walk on a level ground along the hill. He walks 140 meters at a bearing of 120 degrees on the level ground and then turns right at an angle of 140 degrees to climb the hill. The angle of elevation of this path is 15 degrees. He walks for 120 meters to reach the top of the hill. From there, he can straight go down the slope to his starting point. Determine the shortest distance for him to walk to reach the starting point. Now, it has got a lot of wordings, very confusing, right? A lot of statements. So what you need to do here is to break it down to simple sentences, understand what they're trying to say, and then sketch. Once you sketch a diagram, it could be simpler for you to solve the question. So let's begin sketching and then trying it out. It says that Anil starts his morning walk on a level ground along the hill. So hill is on the side, right? He walks 140 meters at a bearing of 0, 020 degrees. So he walks 140 meters at a bearing of 120 uh, 0, 020 degrees on the level ground. Okay, so let's see how do we figure this out? What is this bearing angle? So let's sketch and try to understand the bearing angle first. So bearing angles are measured from north, right? So uh, all the angles from north and they are written in three digits, 0, 2, 0, not 20 degrees, right? 0, 20. Okay. So, so it says he walks 140 meters at a bearing. It means it's kind of like this, right? Kind of like this. So where the angle from the north is 20 degrees, right? So that is 20 degrees. We will write always in 3, 0, 2, 0 when we talk about bearing angles. Now, this is my 2D sketch, right? So this is my 2D diagram. And see, it is not to the scale. So very rough sketch. Now here, we know this is 20, and he walks for 140 meters. So this distance here is 140 meters, right? So let us say this is the, the starting point. Okay, so that's the starting point, and he reaches the point, which is A for us. Now, then turns right at an angle of 140 degrees to climb a hill. That means on the right side here, there is a hill, right? So he turns right to climb the hill. So this is this is his path which he is going, right? So from here he turns right. He turns right at an angle of 140 degrees. 140 degrees means 40 less than 180, correct? 40 less than 180. That is what 140 degrees is, right? So let's say this is the turning point, correct? So this is this is what the direction is. So on this side, we have a hill. You get the idea. So that is the situation. So when he takes this turn at this particular point, the angle which is left here is how much? So this clearly is 40 degrees angle, correct? Because he was walking, he took a turn which is 140 degrees. So, so the angle which this initial walk makes with the hill itself is 40 degrees. Do you understand how did we arrive at this particular situation? So that's the hill. Now he is, he is walking on the hill, right? So he's walking on the hill now. But as we go there, 
It says, then turns right at an angle of 140 degrees to climb the hill. Climb the hill, as soon as we reach that stage, we are clear that we are talking about a 3D figure, correct? Climb the hill. So, so means what? What could we do? How do we sketch? Now, combining 2D and 3D is actually very difficult. So, split them. So, we'll have a 3D diagram, which is separate. Okay. But we have understood that this is the base of the hill, right? This is the base of the hill. Is that clear to you? Now, it's going on top of this hill, right? So, it is better to sketch it separately. That's the whole idea. Okay. Let's try to do it. So, for sketching three-dimensional, we'll need a 3D frame. So, that becomes our 3D frame. That is how we sketch 3D figures. Now, here, the angle of elevation of this path is 15 degrees. So, let's say he climbs, and he climbs from this point to some point there. So, we know that this angle of elevation here is 15 degrees. Does make sense to you, right? So, this is the point a for us correct so connecting these two this is the point a for us and he climbs and reaches the top somewhere there so it says he walks for 120 meters to reach the top of the hill that means this distance is 120 meters right to reach the top of the hill from there he can straight go down the slope to his starting point, determine the shortest distance for him to walk to reach the starting point. So there is some starting point. So from there, he can see the starting point, right? And we know that starting point makes an angle of 40 degrees with the hill, right? So the starting point makes this angle of 40 degrees. Do you see this angle of 40 degrees? So that means we could make an angle of 40 degrees here, right? And then we get to the starting point. You get the idea, right? So, so we say, well, making an angle of 40 degrees here, kind of like this. Well, we could go, we have to go longer than 120, but, you know, there's limitation of space. So let's be, let's make a short line. doesn't matter. So again, we are saying this is not to the scale. However, this distance we know is, uh, he walked 140 earlier, right? So this is the starting point, S. Looking from there, it looks much shorter, right? Okay, no problems. So that is what it is. What we want to find is the distance between the top and the starting point. That is what we need. You get the idea, right? It says, determine the shortest distance for him to walk to reach the starting point. So we need to find Ts. So what is Ts equals to? That is what we need to find. So I hope the concept is clear to you. Now in 3D questions, it's very important to visualize the situation and then begin the solution, right? Do you see how beautifully we have split the question into two parts? We have first made a 2D sketch, right? Walking on a level ground and then the 3D sketch walking on the hill. Now the 3D using the X, Y, Z, as I've shown here, is very critical. So that really helps. Now, I think you can solve the question. So the idea here is to find what TS is. Now from this, you know this triangle, the vertical triangle, which is um, AST. We know two sides, we need to find the third side. How do we get that? Well, we can connect it with two other triangles, which we already have. So what I'm going to do is basically, going to connect the projection of t is right there at o so that is the ground level correct so on the ground we do have this triangle correct so on the ground we have the triangle a o s and now this position here is clearly a 90 degree angle right the hill and the projection makes a 90 degree angle so we have a right triangle there t o s we can find TO, we can also find AO using 15 degrees angle and the side 120 given to us. And once we know that side of the base of the hill, 
we can solve for rest of the values. You get the idea. Now, with this in mind, I'd like you to pause the video, read the question once again, solve, and get your answer, right? So I hope this concept is clear. So now, we'll begin from this particular drawing where we have combined the 2D and the 3D. Definitely, it is not to the scale, but it is with convenience of our working. You get the idea, right? And I hope you have also understood the meaning of bearing angle, right? For some students, bearing angle is a new thing. Bearing means measuring from north. Is that okay? It's measuring from north. Now let's see how to solve it. So I'll provide you with a very straightforward uh, calculation from here onwards. Here's my diagram once again. It is not to the scale, right? So, so this diagram definitely is not to the scale, right? It is as per our convenience. Perfect. So what we've done here is there is a starting point S, which you can see. So this is the point from where Anil starts walking. He walks 140 meters. All the units where distances are in meters, uh, 20 degrees uh, at a bearing of 0, 20 degrees. And then he turns right by 140, right? So this is the hillside for us, right? That is the hill. So hillside. But the elevation is 15 degrees on the hill. So this path A to T is the is the rise, the hill slope, right? So he walks 120 meters along this path, reaches the top. From the top, he can see the starting point. And we need to find this distance, S to T. Perfect. So we do have a couple of right triangles here, which can be solved. So I've taken a projection of the top of the hill to the base, right? This is the straight line along which he, the hill is there, correct? So let's find these sides. So clearly, what we can do here is, uh, we can use the sine ratio and the cosine ratio. We have a right triangle. So let's solve with right triangle A, O, T, right? So A, O, T, at O, we have a right triangle, 90 degrees angle. So the side A, O, which is the adjacent side, A, O, will be cos of the hypotenuse. So we get this is 120 cos of 15 degrees. The angle of elevation is 15 degrees here. And that gives you value of 115.91, correct? So we have one value, which is this, which is 115.91, right? So 115.91. So I'm using two decimal places rounding off since we need to write the answer to two decimal places. So that's not a bad idea. So we'll write two decimal places, okay. The other side, which is this component, it is basically the sine component, right? This is the opposite side, that is the adjacent side. And therefore, this particular side is what? Hypotenuse, which is 120, right? Let me write down. So 120. sine of angle 15 degrees, correct? Which gives us, using the calculator, value of 31.06, again rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so we know now two sides of the triangle AOT, right? So those were very critical sides to help us the other two triangles to solve. So since we know T2O, now, and we know this side A to O, we can work on the triangle on the base, correct? So now let's work on the triangle OAS. So OAS is a triangle on the horizontal plane. Now in this triangle, we know two sides and an angle, right? So we have, in this case, two sides, but the angle is included, right? So it is side, angle, side. Since we have side, angle, side, that's the angle 40 degrees, which is known to us. The two sides, one of them we calculated, 115.91, the other one is 140. We can use the cosine law, right? So using the cosine law, we can find what SO is. So SO square is equals to AS square plus AO square minus two times ASAO cos of angle between them, which is 40 degrees. Substituting the values known to us, we calculate that to be 
square we have calculated, right? We didn't square root it because we'll again solve a triangle using Pythagorean theorem. So I put SO square as 8160.53 and, you know, all the lengths are in meters. Okay. Now, once we know this side also, and we know this side also, we can now find ST, that is what is required, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Since this is also a right triangle, correct? We are talking about now the triangle TOS. TOS is also a right triangle. So where ST is the hypotenuse? Using Pythagorean theorem, right? So we have used Pythagorean theorem here. We can find the third side. So sum of squares added. This is already a squared value. This is a squared value, correct? Plus 31.06 square, we got 9125.16. So ST clearly is the square root of this value, which gives us 95.53 correct so if you want to really round it you could round it to 96 also but i wrote it this you can always write it to 96 meters if you want to but anyway what we are discussing here is a method to solve some very difficult questions where three dimensionals and two dimensional diagrams have to be incorporated and times uh, you know we're talking about north and clearly this doesn't look like going north, right? 20 degrees north of east doesn't look like. But it is convenient to sketch like this. So I hope you understand the concept. So once again, getting back to the concept, that is the concept, correct? So we have shown clearly the bearing angle of 20 degrees, moving a distance of 140, taking a right turn with an angle of 140 degrees. This is along the hill. But going up the hill at an angle of elevation of 15 degrees, reaching the top, and then you can see that there's a direct path between S and T along the hill. You could just roll over right to this point. We are interested in finding that distance. Imagine the projection of this point on the flow and then, I mean, the ground, level ground. And that gives you a vertical triangle AOT from where the two sides can be solved which will help us to further solve uh, the other triangles and get the solution. Perfect. So I hope you understand and appreciate the ap approach taken in this question to solve it. Feel free to write a comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Also, feel free to write an email in case you have any doubts or any questions to share. Thanks for your time once again and all the best.